Next up, we have um, Nick Colney, um, who has been investigated um, library compartmentalization. Right. Hi, my name is Nick Connolly. Um, just a bit of background. Uh, I didn't realize there was going to be a photo of the Cap computer used earlier, so uh, uh, you're seeing it for a second time. Um, I came across it when I was a student. I worked on some software for it. So that's where my interest uh, came from. Um, and then at Dedicore Software, we pioneered storage virtualization. Um, and as part of that, uh, I was involved with a, a digital security by design project for porting um, SPDK and DPDK uh, to Morello. And as uh, Artegrity, uh, we worked on library compartmentalization, which is the work that I'll be talking about now. Um, and I'm currently at ARM, um, but I should say I'm speaking in a personal capacity because I'm not working on the Morello project um, at ARM. So what's the background? Um, data is a critical resource, uh, and we talk about securing it uh, at rest with encryption. We maybe talk about securing it in motion, but not so much uh, in use, how you protect the data in use. And what we've been trying to look at is how you create a secured storage stack to process that data and how Cherry can fit in that. The primary goal of this work that I'm talking about, and this is really just a user experience of how we got on using library compartmentalization and what we learned from it. It was to look at the viability of applying it to essentially a large code base and to see whether that could secure the stack in any meaningful way. Because the risk is that vulnerabilities in the, uh, the storage stack are actually going to uh, compromise the application potentially, and the other way around, that you want to isolate the um, storage stack from the application. And maybe also isolate SPDK from its own dependencies. I've, Aware that I've been talking about SPDK and DPDK, I don't know how many people have come across those. By the way, I should say that I have a teenage daughter, so I'm used to being interrupted continuously. So I know it's slightly unconventional, but if you want to ask, please just stop me and ask, and I'll try and um, deal with that uh, then. SPDK is it's basically a set of libraries with which you can build high performance user mode storage systems. Uh, it's cutting edge, it's designed for NVMe, uh, it's a polled architecture, and it is production ready. A lot of the uh, major names that you, you will know well are shipping SPDK-based stacks. So it's, it's a real world uh, open source project. Uh, it is very performant. It's tuned uh, for cache line sizes and watching out for um, full sharing and all sorts of things like that. Um, and it has a lockless thread per core style of uh, design and it's optimized for specific CPUs. <clears throat> okay, um, what I'll add to that as well is DPDK is a, um, a data plane development kit, which is designed for networking environments. It uh, is used by SPDK to manage memory and also to manage uh, access to physical devices. If you've got a physical NVMe device, uh, DPDK is the mechanism that allows SPDK to access it directly. <clears throat> I think the first challenge is where do you start? You've got um, 250 libraries. Um, what are you going to use as your compartmentalization boundary? What are you going to use as a test environment to, uh, to try it out? Um, because the compartmentalization is great, but it comes with a cost. There's a cost of transition. And you've got to balance that overhead against the security gain. The first take was uh, can't tackle 250 libraries at once. So we went for um, one composite build of all of the SPDK and DPDK stack combined together. And the work that I'm talking about is based on Cherry BSD 12, uh, 2212. Um, and at that point, library compartmentalization was functional, but was very much still being developed. And the documentation was early stage and uh, code examples were relatively minimal. Okay. Where do you start? Well, a simple little test program that would allow um, experimenting with shared libraries 
and uh, parent executable and watching what happens on the uh, compartment transitions. Uh, it allowed experimenting with the, the make files and how you were building it. And it was a really valuable tool actually, because instead of dealing with uh, you know millions of lines of code, you're dealing with a very small uh, example that you're working on. But the question that came up was, how do you know it's actually working? And so we created Cherry Tree, which is a library that you link in with your application. And then you can call the library and what it will do is look at all the registers that are saved at the point of call, look at the stack contents. And one of the neat things about the capability architecture is that it allows you to tell what's actually a real pointer. Rather than just an arbitrary bit of memory, you know that it's a valid pointer. And so you can walk the data structures and determine everything that's accessible. Um, and that, that was really quite fun. Um, we intended that to be linked with the application because what I wanted to be able to do was to call it on compartment transitions so that it looks at everything that was accessible and spots what the, uh, the leakage is that you're not expecting to have access to. Um, as it worked out, uh, I didn't get to do that all the way through because of time constraints, but um, it's an open source uh, project. You can you know, feel free to uh, build on it or uh, use or whatever. Okay, uh, and then that's an example showing the output that you can get if you uh, display it on the screen. It's showing the, uh, the capability registers and um, working through all of the memory that's, that is accessible through those registers. Okay, FIO uh, is a fairly general purpose uh, Linux test tool. Um, it makes a good harness. And actually, it allowed us to put the whole of the SPDK and DPDK within a ready-built test environment. There wasn't a PureCap build at that point. So firstly, we did a port of it and then um, built the FIO plugin that comes with SPDK. And that was the engine that we were driving uh, IO through. But the question is, how do you tell what the real world impact is? Um, this wasn't an exercise to look at CPU cycles and say, yeah, you know, we've, we've added a few cycles in. This was to say, if I take a real application delivering data, what does it do? So we uh, went for a RAM disk uh, because that way you eliminate the IO latencies. Small block size, because it's a user space stack, it's all running uh, without kernel transitions. And by going for the small block size, you're getting the cost of issuing an IO operation, which is what I wanted to look at, because that's the real world worst case. In the process, we had to resolve a few issues. Um, as I said earlier, it was experimental at that point, and Depeng was absolutely brilliant at responding and uh, helping get some of these uh, eliminated including uh, you know, deadlocks and uh, exceptions accessing thread local storage. Um, one of the interesting things was that calls from one uh, compartment to another um, were working okay, but calls within the uh, library were also passing through the trampoline and that caused some issues for us as well. Um, and at that stage, unused registers were not being cleared and there was no easy way to trace the transitions. Uh, one of the big issues was that uh, argument lists longer than eight were not being passed through uh, correctly. Uh, that is fixed in uh, BSD uh, 2311, Cherry BSD 2311. Uh, solution to that was simply to use variadic arguments and pass it through and then modify the code to work around it. Fortunately, there were only a few cases that mattered and uh, a little bit of scripting was able to pull those out from the compiled code rather than trying to plow through millions of lines of source to figure out what was going on. Outstanding issues. And again, I will say this is uh, based on uh, the 22 release. Uh, calls through function pointers are not supported. It's actually a really common idiom for IO libraries that you issue an IO request and you store a function pointer, and that's what gets called when the IO request completes. 
So that was that was quite a significant uh, issue for us. Um, the other thing that you don't know how much you need this until you actually find it doesn't work. That stack traces across compartments just didn't work. And it's a real pain trying to uh, diagnose that. But I saw from the example earlier that they now work uh, as far as I can see, which is great. That's good That's news. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, the other thing that uh, encountered was that SPDK and FIO both use a shared memory region and they use it to communicate between processes, which means that the way they're written, they stick pointers in there. Uh, I don't think that's quite as uncommon as it would be nice if it was. Uh, the solution obviously is you can use offsets instead of pointers, but I, I have a suspicion that there's more code out there doing this than perhaps um, we realize. Okay, very quick demo. This is of FIO running RAM disk, and we're just looking at the IO latencies and the uh, bandwidth throughput with um, particular types of uh, build. One is with everything as a single library, but it turned out we could also build it as multiple libraries as well. So there's lots of compartmental transitions going on. So hopefully I can make it. Yes, here we go. What you can see is with a single library, there's one transition per IO, and that's a relatively small overhead. With a debug build, it's a slightly higher overhead. With multiple libraries, it's interesting. Uh, we see a segmentation fault, and the reason for that is because of the uh, function pointer being used as the IO completion. The really curious thing is that if you do a debug build, it actually doesn't produce a, a core dump and it actually gives you a number. I think the number's real, um, but treat it with caution. But you know, you're, you're talking maybe 10-ish percent type um, scale, which I don't think is bad for the added security that you're getting. Generally speaking, it just works. Um, the code has not been optimized. It is better uh, or different on 23.11, but I think it shows significant potential to be able to isolate uh, an application from the dependencies that it has, which you, know, you just don't know anything about them really in, mm -hmm. in general. Uh, the code that we worked on is uh, publicly available and um, I knew I was going to get the question, have you looked at 2311? Uh, so here's the answer before I get asked that. I uh, started looking at that this weekend. There are a few minor issues and changes in driver module definition and things like that. Um, interestingly, Git seems to fail to extract the system sources when I tried it. If I use the PureCat version, the non-PureCat worked fine. So I don't know what was going on there. Um, managed to reproduce the benchmark results from previously. Actually, what I saw was the PureCat builds were slightly better performance, but the compartmentalized was slightly worse, a slightly higher penalty for crossing uh, compartment uh, boundaries. Um, and the multi-library results actually produced a number this time instead of core dumping. So again, I don't know quite why that is, but um, benchmarking API, haven't had a chance to work through yet. Uh, did explore that a bit more, the issue there is that the build system is complex for SPDK and uh, DPDK and to get all of the right um, uh, compiler flags at the right time was challenging. But having done that, um, there's still a residual issue, which is if you have a, a base application loading a library and the library that's being loaded, DL open, uh, refers back to a symbol in the base application, at the moment, that's producing a, an unidentified symbol issue, and so I can't get that to load. But um, that's the uh, the rough summary of uh, what we found. Any questions? Yeah. 
Uh, the question for the benefit of the uh, recording is, uh, am I planning on writing up the performance results? Probably not. And the reason is that um, I've spent quite a lot of time over the years working on benchmarks. And I know that um, results are meaningless unless you know exactly what's being tested. What I was after with this was a gut feel response rather than a systematic, um, you know, under these scenarios, this is how it will behave. So I'm cautious. Um, but... Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, do you have any idea on the um, security benefits of the compartmentalization? Um, yes, I mean, that was why uh, I spent time on the cherry tree uh, analyzer to look at what was getting passed across the compartmental boundaries. And um, it is doing a good job. Uh, the, but you have to factor in other, other things as well. So DPDK has a memory manager in it. It allocates a, a chunk of huge pages and then they're carved up and given back to SPDK and a simplistic port, it all works, it runs, it's compartmentalized, and you think life's wonderful until you realize that that memory allocator is returning a capability where the bounds cover the entire um, huge page pool that it's got. Uh, yes, you have ticked the box. Yes, you have ported it. It's not delivering the security benefit you expect. But in general, I think it's very promising. Thank you so much, Nick. Okay. Thank you.